Hey, thanks for tuning in. So behind me is a 2022 Husqvarna Norden 901. Now I wanted to bring you guys a quick video on just my first impressions on this motorcycle since owning it. It's actually only the third day that I've had it now. Um, rode it for a few hours and I think I'm getting close to about 100 miles on it so far. Um, so I've ridden it enough now to develop kind of some first thoughts and impressions, especially you know balanced against my KTM 1090. And I just wanted to kind of talk about those today. So first things first, why did I get a Norden 901? If you've seen my other videos, you know I have a KTM 1090 Adventure, and that is an awesome bike. I've owned it for about a year and a half now, put a little over 3,000 miles on it, have been on some awesome trips, and I've really enjoyed that bike and riding it. But what I have come to find out while riding it is that I don't like how heavy it is. I don't like how top heavy it feels. Um, it is a big bike to move around. Moving around the garage is a pain. Um, that weight is, you know, an asset on the road, especially against the wind and things like that. It makes it a really comfortable bike to ride on the road. But once you get into the slow and soft stuff, um, it's not super confidence inspiring for me. I'm just not, uh, I, you know, I'm not Chris Birch. Uh, I can't manhandle a big adventure bike like that. And I don't even want to pretend to, if I want to go do crazy off-road stuff, then I have a dirt bike for that. So kind of been on the search for something a little bit lighter. You know, the KTM 890 Adventure was really high up on my list, as was the Tenere 700. And then comes Husqvarna with the Norden 901. Now, the boxes that this checks that the other bikes that are out there don't is, it really seems like Husqvarna put, you know, a lot of thought into making a bike that is kind of a good all-arounder. It doesn't really lean in one direction more than the other. At least that's kind of my impression of it. And I think they really nailed that on this bike. And that's really what struck me when it was first announced. I was like, wow, that looks like a bike that's gonna be something I could put hours on the road and be perfectly happy with. I could put hours off-road and it would have enough suspension and all of that stuff to make me happy there. Now I'm not Looking to go out and do, you know, crazy extreme riding, as I already mentioned, but, you know, things like fire roads, BDRs, and stuff like that. When I was looking at this bike, um, I felt that it was going to be something that could do those for me, and it would really deliver everything that I wanted. So, that's really what kind of brought me this way, is uh, I wanted a bike that was a bit smaller, but could still do all the stuff that I wanted to do. So, yeah, that's why I ended up with the... Norden 901 as I feel it checks all of the boxes for me. So why don't we go ahead and talk about some of the first impressions on this motorcycle. Now what I noticed immediately when I went to basically go see this motorcycle for the first time, I'm, they're basically unicorns, they're hard to find or see or anything right now, so I had never seen one before, never touched one or anything, so when I got the call um, and went to go kind of just sit on this before signing the papers. The first thing I noticed was how much lighter it felt versus my KTM 1090. Um, it is insane. Now I think on paper they're not too far apart from a weight perspective. Um, don't quote me, maybe 20-30 pounds. I'll put it up on the screen, the difference between them on paper. Um, but where this really shines is how low that weight is. So the center of gravity is just so much lower than the KTM 1090, and that makes this bike feel way more manageable and confidence inspiring. And it feels like I could get it into, you know, hairier situations and not be, you know, fighting this kind of beast that's wanting to fall over on me, which sometimes is what the KTM 1090 felt like. So I was immediately blown away, yeah, just by its size. Um, it was also a lot smaller of a bike in person than I was expecting. For some reason I was thinking it was going to be a little bit bigger um, and then when I saw it I was like well that thing's really small. So it kind of took me back that way um, almost to the point of like I was like is this bike going to be enough? Like is it going to have enough suspension travel? Is it am I, am I too tall for it? I'm, I'm 6'2 and I, it just yeah it was a, a lot more tidier of a package than I was thinking and it had been a long time since I had sat on a uh, 890 Adventure R. Um, so I had forgot just, you know, what the size of this bike was. Now one of the other big things I noticed was the motor. Um, my 1090 is a V-twin. It's got a really, really good sound to it. I really love the sound of that motor. Um, and this is a parallel twin. And there is a, a pretty large difference in how they feel. I mean, this is obviously smaller displacement. Um, but this bike feels more uh, tractable. I, it feels like you, um, and I guess it, it does, when you get it down a little bit lower, you can actually lug it 
smoother than the 1090. So the 1090 gets like, seems to get really unhappy under like 3000 RPMs and it's, uh, you know, starts shaking and stuff like that. It just doesn't really like to be down that low. Um, this is a lot smoother all through the RPM range that I've noticed. You know, the exhaust notes, not, not as good, but um, it's not bad either. Uh, I definitely still enjoy it. Um, it's a good bike to, you know, romp on and stuff. I can't do too much of that yet because I'm still within the braking period. Um, but it definitely has enough power for me. Now that, you know, that 1090, I think it's about 125 horsepower. This is uh, like 105 horsepower. And honestly, this is ample, um, just a little bit lighter of a bike. It doesn't really feel like I am losing much. Um, it is a pretty noisy engine. Uh, it definitely doesn't sound like, you know, some Italian race engine or something like that, like nice and smooth and quiet. It's uh, pretty clanky, uh, but I think that's just, that's just how KTM motors are in general. I mean, the 1090 is not quiet either, nor was my Husqvarna FE350 dirt bike. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to be really happy with this motor and the power that it puts out. Now, another thing uh, that I noticed right away on this bike was the seat. Uh, it is really comfortable. Probably the most comfortable stock seat I've sat on from the KTM Husqvarna brand. Uh, they're not really known for comfortable seats. It's uh, miles ahead of my seat concept seat on my KTM 1090 and I'm really looking forward to getting more time on this to see just how comfortable it is. Um, I mean, I just don't know why manufacturers don't put more time into the seats on their bikes instead of essentially creating something that's like disposable. Um, so hopefully this isn't that and its initial comfort is something that carries into longer and longer rides. Now, another cool thing about this bike that I love is the auxiliary lighting and the LED headlights um, and the backlit controls. Now, I haven't been able to you know, ride this in the dark yet, but I can tell um, that the auxiliary lighting is going to be very, very nice to have and that the LED headlight is going to be nice and bright. Time will tell if I want to add on additional lights to it, but as a stock package, I think it's really good and kind of a move in the right direction. Um, and then the backlit controls on this is awesome. Being able to see your switch gear in the dark and see the buttons and the cruise control and all that stuff. Um, this suite seems like something that, uh, you know, every bike, once you start getting up in this price range, uh, should just have anyways. My KTM 1090 doesn't have that. Um, so it'll be nice to have on this bike. Now, something else that's awesome that Husqvarna did on this bike is it comes factory with cruise control and the quick shifter. Um, I've only ridden one other motorcycle with cruise control and that was the Harley Davidson uh, Pan America. And it was just so nice to have, like being able to loosen up grip on your throttle hand and kind of focus on the ride and just be more comfortable. I can tell that's going to be an absolute game changer for me on longer rides. I did have a throttle lock with the 1090, but they're just like finicky, you know, you can never really get them just right and obviously once you start going up a hill then you got to add more throttle and relock it and then you know they're just finicky to deal with so having cruise control is going to be awesome and then the quick shifter is super super rad i've never ridden a motorcycle um, with a quick shifter or anything so i knew going into it yeah you can shift without using the clutch but i didn't really didn't really know what that would feel like and when it would be applicable and just riding through some of the curves here and riding around town, um, banging through the gears without using the clutch is just so fun. Um, the bike is just so much, I mean, I can shift, you know, really fast anyways, but it's just quicker and smoother without the clutch and it feels just kind of automatic, like you're just going and then coming into the corners, um, you know, you're not upsetting the bike by pulling in the clutch and letting the engine, you know, spool down or anything like that. Um, so I can tell it's going to be really, really nice to have in a lot of different situations. And it's also just really fun. Now, um, the KTM 890 and 890 Adventure R, I think cruise control and um, the quick shifter are optional add-ons. So it's cool that Husqvarna, you know, threw that in on this motorcycle. Now, if you're coming from something like the KTM 1090 or, or an older bike, uh, you know, obviously one of the first things you're going to notice is that TFT display. Um, I absolutely love it. I love the black screen with kind of the white and, you know, yellow and red, um, I guess, gauges and stuff on it. Uh, stands out really well, super easy to read and really bright light. 
I love just the customizability of it, being able to put different things that I want on the screen. Um, I think that's just, you know, super cool, um, especially coming from the 1090. It's kind of got a mix of analog and digital, which I didn't mind, um, you know, that that's okay. But uh, this just allows for, you know, a bit more customization in the information that you want to see. And I think they really did a good job on this one. Now, something I don't like about this bike is the stock tires. Um, they're really good on the road. They feel great, nice and smooth, good turn in, good traction. Um, but ultimately, they're too road oriented. And I'm gonna have to get something that's a little bit closer to 50-50. Um, so that's kind of one gripe that I have with this bike is th the tires just aren't gonna be long-term for me. Another big gripe uh, and kind of Hopefully not foreshadowing um, is the shock on this motorcycle was blown from the factory, which kind of is weird to me, but I guess a big batch of them that went to the West Coast, and I think Canada had issues with the rear suspension. So there's a lot of other reports out there of that happening. Husqvarna is aware they did get this fixed within a week. So it was really, really fast turnaround on that but I am curious if there's gonna be other issues with this bike. I'm hoping that there is not and that this was just a, kind of a one-time thing, but it is worth noting that this did happen on a brand new bike. So my KTM 1090 has the most terrible windscreen ever. Um, the buffeting off of it is so bad and it doesn't really seem how you set it. It's just kind of terrible. Uh, it probably would be better without it. Uh, happy to report that the 901 here has a much better windscreen than that. It's not perfect. There still is buffeting issues, but it is a better um, windscreen than what I had on the 1090, which is going to be super nice on those long rides because buffeting and your head moving around and stuff like that just brings a lot of fatigue and it's a, it just, it's a distraction. So happy to report that this one's better. Um, and then the other thing is it's got a lot of just kind of, I guess, what would you call it? Like environmental, I don't know, protection, um, you know, with the fairings, the bigger fairings on it. That's really something that drew me to this versus like the KTM 890 Adventure is that this has some more road going um, niceties, I guess, things that would make, you know, longer road stints more comfortable. So this does a good job of keeping the wind and all that stuff off of your legs and shins um, in, in those areas without it getting hot or anything like that. So feels really well protected. So those are my first impressions on the Norden 901. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but I didn't want to make this video uh, too long. Um, there'll definitely be more content to come on this. I need to get it kind of outfitted for adventure. It needs a luggage rack and crash bars and things like that. So definitely stay tuned. There'll be more video to come there. Um, follow me on my Instagram. I'll link that in the description if you want more, you know, kind of behind the scenes stuff and in between content, you can definitely get that there. Uh, give this video a like if you can. Helps me um, a lot and subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment uh, below as well. Looking forward to seeing what you guys um, have to say. Let me know if there's anything else you want to know about this bike or anything for future videos. Uh, but until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one.